Good morning. I'm shooting out the window here because I've got a group of bull elk. Some of them still have velvet and some of them have stripped their velvet and one of them kind of has the velvet dangling off right now. So they're all in kind of that right in that window of when they're starting to strip their velvet to begin their rut and so they can start fighting. But uh, it's pretty cool because there's all these bulls together right now and they're not fighting yet. They're just still hanging out together. So uh, it's still really dark. I'm shooting at a 30th of a second. And a 30th of a second is really slow to be getting sharp photos. So um, I'm with the 600. I'm at F4, ISO 1600, 30th of a second out here. And... The elk are looking at me. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten that I see in this group. And they're being pretty tolerant of me so far. I am going to move here in a sec. You know what? I'm going to slow the shutter speed way down for a minute. And try some motion blur stuff while it's this dark. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. So now I'm down to a quarter of a second as they're walking slowly here. I'm trying for some pretty simple motion blur. See if I can get anything good out of this scene. They're all going to come across the road here in a minute. i got to decide if I want to relocate or uh, just stay where I am. That one has all kinds of velvet and stuff dangling in front of his face, which is pretty cool. They are all just going to cross the road here. So I'm going to go for some quarter of a second motion blur, but I'm going to have to pop my door open, get a different angle on them. And it might make them nervous. I'll go across the road. Okay, so they all crossed the road and have now disappeared into the timber over there, except for one loner here. And let's see if I can make something. He looked like he was going to go the other direction, but now he's on the run. So I'm going to try some motion blur with him. And get back down to a quarter of a second which is a long exposure looks good and uh, see if I can get some motion blur as he's running oh yeah now he's hauling he's going so fast a quarter of a second is I'm going up to an eighth of a second all right I got a bad angle on him again That's the last one. So, now he's gone into the timber. Okay, so that's a great way to start the morning. So far, um, I have no idea. Those motion blur shots are like, you know, kind of throwing a dart at the wall, but 
you know, you're practicing to pan exactly at the same speed as the animal, but then you really got to get lucky too to get one that's pleasing. So I won't know until I get home if any of those are going to be any good. I sure have fun. I sure have fun trying those. And uh, it's like uh, Christmas when you when you get one that works because you're at home and you're like, whoa! It's like this cool little gift of uh, you know you find a cool photo that came out of all the, that blurry mess. So I'm hoping that that happens. And uh, if not, I'll show you a couple of the ones that didn't work. If it did work, I'll show you ones that worked. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to keep cruising now. We've got uh, enough light now to start shooting stuff other than motion blur, but probably at ISO 32 or 62, 3200 or 6400. But we're getting close. Here's a couple more elk in the road. Let's see what these guys are going to do. They're trying to cross. These guys aren't as big, it doesn't look like. Yeah, I might not. I'm just going to let these guys cross the road, I think. They're running around like maniacs. Well, now a car coming the other way blocked them from crossing the road. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to just go fast and get out of their way. And there they are over there. You probably can't see them, can you? That lead bull is actually pretty big. Probably should have stopped to photograph him. But anyway, I'm going to keep cruising around here and look for other stuff this morning. Uh, probably bison at the top of the list. There have been grizzly bears out and about, but they've been causing huge bear jams. And uh, it's hard to make videos like this at bear jams, so I probably will pass on those while I'm making a video this morning. So... We're off. I'll let you know what I find next. And uh, hope you're having a good morning or evening or whenever you're watching this. So far, it's a beautiful morning here in the Tetons. It's 34 degrees outside and I love driving with my window down on these beautiful, cool, crisp mornings. It feels so good and so invigorating. Uh, so even though I'm a little bit cold, it's like refreshing and uh, wonderful and it just smells great. So uh, anyway, roll down those windows, get some fresh air, it's awesome. Cranes in the road. I bet they're gonna fly. Oh, here they go. Alright, I lost that bear again. I was able to make a few photos there and they're um, not working. 
it's uh, just kind of a grizzly moving through the tall grass. You can see its fur and its hump and once in a while a peek at its nose or something. But it's just so cluttered and so nasty in here that uh, I think the chances of making a decent photo in here are really, really, really slim. So even though it's a grizzly bear, uh, I don't know that it's worth spending much time with this. So I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to move ahead and just kind of scope out the scene that's further ahead and see, sorry, and see if there's anything more promising up here in the direction the bear was heading. But looks like one of those scenes where it's, it's always awesome to see a grizzly bear, a wild bear, uh, but I just don't see that I can make any good photos in this, this particular situation. It's just uh, too gnarly and cluttered and the bear is stuck in this tall grass. Okay, well, I'm going to leave a grizzly bear and look for something better because I just don't know what I can do with this. So, Anyway, it's always awesome to see a bear. But it's also a little bit disappointing when you can't make any decent photos of that bear. But anyway, good to see you, bear. That was a uh, sub-adult grizzly with a collar. So even if the situation was a little better with the tall grass, I still have to deal with that ugly collar on the bear. So I'm out of here. Go see what else. I can find hopefully something good out there. All right, I'm gonna get out and do some bison this morning. So it's bison rut time. And what that means is the bison, the bulls are all hopped up on testosterone and they're fighting for dominance um, to determine who gets to mate with the ladies. So they're out here in this big giant meadow uh, I'm going to get out of the vehicle. They're far enough away that I can safely get out of the vehicle and shoot uh, off of a tripod. I'll grab the 600 and I'm going to use the Z7 so I can kind of flip back and forth between video and stills very easily. Um, and then I'm mostly just going to kind of hang here and just kind of see what develops out here. But uh, if they come really close, I'm back in the car because these bulls, they're really fast. And when they're on uh, in rut mode, they're like totally unpredictable and they go berserk. And I want no part of that. So um, anyway, I'm going to get out and uh, shoot a little video, make some stills. The light's still nice this morning. And uh, there's also some pronghorn running around that I'm going to try. So another thing I'm doing out here is uh, slow shutter speed work. So like quarter of a second slow. And, uh, or, you know, it depends how fast the wildlife is moving. If they're running, I'll crank that up to, you know, even a 20th, a 30th of a second. But what I'm doing right now is the D850 with a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. And I've got a variable neutral density filter on here. So I can totally darken that scene down, uh, you know, shoot at base ISO 64, um, like F11. And then I can just darken this to get myself to a quarter of a second exposure or whatever I feel like um, being at. I can just adjust this and get it as dark or as light as I need it to be. So this works really well. Uh, the idea there with this slow shutter speed is to hold it really steady and try and pan perfectly with the animal as it's moving. And that way the background and everything blurs uh, Ideally, you want its eyeball to be sharp as you're panning. Um, its legs are going to be blurry, but you can get some really cool effects. I love that. Some people don't. Um, I really enjoy the, the challenge of getting a fun motion blur image. I talked about that a little bit earlier with those elk. Uh, I didn't need a neutral density filter um, on the 600 because it was still really dark. So it was easy to get a super slow shutter speed. Now we're full bright sunlight. Uh, I need to darken that down with a neutral density filter. And if I put a neutral density filter on the front of the 600, it would probably cost $1,000 because it's gigantic. So they don't make one that big that I'm aware of. Uh, so anyway, that's what I'm doing out here, the 70 to 300. And then I'll bring the 600 on a tripod as well so I can get uh, in tight on some of that faraway action. And 
I'll show you a little video montage when I'm done of what I come up with. Hopefully there's some decent photos and video that the bison have been pretty active lately. So uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Roll that little montage of uh, what I shot when I'm done later. But now, you know what I'm saying. Okay, see you in a bit. Roll it. <laughs> Got bright out here. Uh, okay, so I just went for a little a short walk along the river here as part of my morning uh, photography in the park. So uh, I think I'm going to use this opportunity to wrap things up. I didn't find anything along the river here. I was hoping for some eagles or osprey or pelicans or otters. Nothing. Uh, but uh, this was just kind of, you know, a pretty typical morning here in the park. And um, this is kind of what what we do on my private workshops here in the Tetons. So, uh, you know, the, the landscape this morning, like while it was beautiful light, there was no clouds and no drama. Um, so I just kind of ignored the landscape this morning, unless there was some wildlife within that landscape, then I would focus on that. But... Uh, I didn't feel real landscapey to me this morning, so I went after wildlife and uh, had some good success out here. Um, made a few nice photos, made some bad photos too. But this is kind of typical of what we do on my um, private workshops in the Tetons here. Um, so when you come out with me uh, on these workshops, I, we typically go out for four hours at sunrise and we just kind of chase the light and the and the circumstances and look for, you know, whatever wildlife, whatever you know, my client would be particularly interested in, we'd go after that. Um, but mostly we're just adapting to the conditions out here. And that's what we did today, looking for different uh, wildlife and the different light and uh, just having a blast and just kind of taking what what nature gives us out here. Uh, and then typically we take a midday break during the heat of the day and then go back out and do it all again for four hours in the evening. And so it's awesome. So it gives us plenty of time to shoot during the best light and do instruction and make some nice photos. So uh, if you're interested in uh, a workshop with me, give me a call. Um, most of September is filled up already for me and some of October. And that's kind of the best the best time of the year, honestly, that September, October window uh, for the fall with the elk rut, the moose rut, the fall colors, uh, just you know, potential for dramatic weather, all that stuff really adds up. So if you're interested in September and October, then of course, November and December are awesome as well. Um, get in touch with me. We'll do these private workshops out here. Uh, we do a lot of instruction and make some nice photos as well. So uh, I'm going to call it a day out here today. It was a lovely morning and um, just pretty typical, but made some decent images out here. Got to see elk and a grizzly bear, bison, pronghorn. I think that's about it. That's good enough. It was lovely. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Later.